again. Let's give thanks to God as we worship. Let's sing, all people that on earth do dwell. Now let us pray together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, <coughs> all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, we <coughs> 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 magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Now let us remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. We confess together. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we've sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, <coughs> through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And now, let's say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You're seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we take a moment of silence and then we will pray. The collect for this, the 10th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage, never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. This prayer we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated. Shamian will read our first prayer. Let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had, been, that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you're set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things he was doing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good to see you two. Couldn't see you around the corner. Welcome. This daughter, this woman, is a daughter of Abraham. Words from today's Holy Gospel. This woman is a daughter of Abraham. This woman was a lady who had been crippled by a spirit, we're told, for the past 18 years. She'd become totally bent over. Yeah, we still occasionally see such people in the streets or in hospital or around, totally hunchbacked, unable to look up, and unable to do all the things that we who are not crippled are able to do. The Holy Gospel reading focuses totally on that lady, on her healing and, the, and its consequences. And in this passage, we see something of the incredible grace and the wonderful power of Jesus, the healer. So, as we begin, let's reflect on the different reactions to this act of love and grace. The woman, we don't know her name, the woman, she glorified God. Words of Luke, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. Some parallels with another of the miracles of Jesus. Remember when he, he healed the lepers, ten of them, and one came to say thank you. And he said, where are the others? And they're God. They were healed. They probably were skipping and dancing as they went, but they never came to say thank you. They never glorified God. One came and said thank you. The woman glorified God. The crowd? Derek, you'd have thought Chelsea had scored. The crowd were ecstatic. They went 1-0 up with two minutes to go. The entire crowd, Luke tells us, was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. They were delighted. So that's the woman, that's the crowd. What about the representative of the status quo, the leader of the synagogue? A totally different reaction. Luke tells us he was indignant. The norms by which his church operated were being turned totally upside down. And he wasn't having it. He told the crowd, you can come six days to be healed. Don't come on the Sabbath. 
I've told you before about Mr. Bill Duff, the leader of the church from my childhood, so I won't, I won't over-egg the pudding in, in repeating it, but it's totally relevant here. Mr. Bill Duff was the church steward, uh, we call him now the church warden, and the new family who came and organized singing and dancing, and loads of people came and were having a wonderful time, and he stood up as soon as he could and said, all good things must come to an end, and the party was killed in two seconds. It was different. He wasn't comfortable with it. He couldn't take it. The same with the leader of the synagogue. So you see, it was a miracle. It totally transformed the life of the woman, but different people reacted in different ways. The majority, it has to be said, saw it as an act of love and grace. The minority as a, an unpleasant diversion from the calm and order of a totally boring existence. So now, let's look at the miracle through the eyes of the woman. I say, I keep repeating the woman because we don't know her name. We don't know anything about her. Luke simply tells us she'd been crippled for 18 years and we can imply from the way that she's described, she was an outcast, just like a lot of people in our society who don't conform to the norms. Now, we might say, oh, that was 2,000 years ago. We're different now, but are we? When we think of the attitude of society to uh, gays, to immigrants, to people of color, not to mention invalids, like well, that's what we would classify the lady as now, an invalid. Right through to today, there's still a tendency, far too common, to identify them and us, the ones who are, in inverted commas, normal, and the ones who are a bit different, and by implication, inferior. Through this one single act of grace, Jesus showed that them and us characterizations are totally wrong. In a stroke, he rewrites the rules in a good way. Yes, the Mr. Bill Duff of the, of the church, of the synagogue, was right. This wasn't in conformity with the Jewish law. Jesus accepted that. And so that was a deliberate act that was done to show that the rules of society have only a purpose in ensuring order, order, orderliness of society. But if that stands in the way of a true act of love, then love comes first. The woman had been buried by society in those 18 years. She'd been cast out. She'd, she'd been ignored. Buried is a very appropriate word. It reminds me of the saying that when the world tries to bury us, God turns us into seeds. And eventually those seeds sprout and grow again. And so the hunchback woman, she transformed the seed sprouted and suddenly, yeah, she was normal again. She was okay to invite to dinner because you wouldn't need a special seat. You wouldn't need to serve it in a bowl because she couldn't use a knife and fork like everybody else can. As if that matters. Jesus turns us all into seeds. And in this respect, it's pure serendipity that where the Holy Gospel ends, uh, Luke, uh, verse 18 of chapter 13, verse 19, the very next verse, Jesus teaches about God's kingdom being like a mustard seed. And so we can easily imagine that he said, look at this woman. She's the seed that's been buried in the earth and God's kingdom is like a mustard seed. It turns into an enormous tree. An enormous tree of outcasts, of people who don't conform in our society. And in this respect, there, there are parallels with Victor Hugo's incredible novel, you know, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, 
we're probably starting to whistle the tune to Phantom of the Opera already. But in the original book, and to a certain extent, Andrew Lloyd Webber um, does this as well, but in the original book, Victor Hugo goes deeply into the basic decency and humanity of Quasimodo. Yes, he was, a, he was a hunchback and he had a horribly distorted face, but Victor Hugo dives in to show the decency of the man. Yes, his physical appearance was horrible, but his personality showed love and care for others. He wasn't just a monstrous freak. And so, the outcasts, the ones that are different, can be just the same as us in the way that they live their lives and in their goodness. In some ways, they can be, often be better than us. I said we don't know anything about the woman, but it's possible she'd been a leader in her field before she was crippled. In the bulletin, I write a little bit about, about Handel, George Frederick Handel, and about how he went through a dreadful time after he suffered a stroke, and it stopped him being able to do what he was born to do, write and compose music. And he became incredibly depressed until he heard from a church, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he went home, and he started to write the Messiah. Now, for all we know, the woman may have been equally gifted. We just don't know. What we do know is that Handel was a committed Christian, and all performances of anything he wrote during his life were all in aid of charities. They weren't for profit for himself. And the first time that the Messiah was performed in Dublin, the proceeds went uh, in aid of the poor and depressed. De, uh, distressed people, those who were in prison for debt. In other words, those who were outcasts, those who were on the edge of society. Okay. It's all been a bit serious so far, so let's just divert for a moment. The uh, mention of Handel reminds me of the lovely story about Mozart and the lady who said, I cannot, st you've, if you've read Facebook, you might have heard it, right? lady who said, uh, I can't stand these people who go on as if they know all about Mozart. They haven't even seen his paintings. So there we go. Right, back to it. That, that's the digression for today. So finally for today, what's this got to do with us? All this talk about outcasts and acts of love and grace and that everybody is a seed that can be planted by God and maybe end up as a mustard tree. What's it got to do about us? Well, possibly a lot. For all of us, there are times when we feel that despite our best efforts, we're not appreciated. There are times like Handel when we probably feel discouraged, depressed. It's a bit the same for Jesus. You know, whatever he did, there was somebody there saying, <laughs> shouldn't have done that. Nazareth? They wanted to drum him out of the town. They couldn't believe that somebody who had grown up there had turned into such an eloquent preacher. He went and uh, healed on the Sabbath, and he was in trouble with the leader of the synagogue. Whatever he did created adverse reactions. And as I said before, the ruler was actually right, the ruler of the synagogue. Jesus had broken those laws, but his life was about taking all those laws and showing that the real law, the one which was most important, was what he called the new commandment, the new covenant, a new way for us to understand and meet with God. That new covenant to love one another as he has loved us was a new way of living governed by a new principle of love uh, which by implication means a whole new way to be, behave. Um, Paul summarizes this beautifully in, you know which one, the first letter 
of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. I'm sure we can all quote some words from, from that. But the conclusion puts it all into context. Faith, hope, and love, these three abide. And the greatest of these is? You're allowed to talk. We're allowed to talk in church. Maybe there's a rule against it. The leader of the synagogue sitting at the back looking to wait to see if any of you have talked. And you write your name down. Love, of course, is love. And you all knew it even if you didn't say it. The greatest of these is love. That one we all know. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Another beautiful one. John the Evangelist, in his first letter, in chapter 4, he summarized what this business of loving and living means. He wrote, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Let us love one another, for love is from God. Whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. I said John wrote that. Remember, John was blind by this time. John spoke it, John felt it, John shared it, and his scribe wrote it. He was an outcast. He couldn't see. He'd need a white stick. Made him different. Do we love Judy any less because she's so playing with a white stick? Of course not. It makes no difference whatsoever. What is important is that we love. So the Bible reading today challenges us all to realize that rules are rules. They're there to order society, but they're not sufficient to ensure and assure and ensure faith. We are challenged to answer the question, are we listening to the Spirit of God or are we simply following the crowd? So, if we saw Jesus heal a crippled woman on the Sabbath, would we be ecstatic like the crowd? Or would we be indignant like the leader of the synagogue? Let us pray that it would be the former, not the latter. And let us not only pray, but let us prove through our actions that we are willing to live a life of love for all. That we are seeds that will grow and will become from a mustard seed a mighty tree. Let us prove that we are willing to love all irrespective of who they are, how they look, what disabilities they might have. Let us never forget those words of John. Love is from God and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Amen. And so with a, a flick of the switch, we move to the profession of faith. Please stand. And now let's profess our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of a heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And now we have our prayers of intercession which today are led from Wolverhampton.
by Denise Modell. Let us pray. O Lord, be for me a stronghold to which I may ever resort. Send out to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. O Lord our God, most merciful and full of compassion, healer of the sick, defender of those who suffer, we, your people here at All Saints, and throughout your church, humbly give ourselves joyfully that through your grace we may know your love, which has no boundaries, choosing to give of ourselves to others as you gave to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask for your blessing on our bishops, Justin, Sarah and Lisa, for your wisdom to guide them in all they do for your church and its people. Lord, your people here at All Saints humbly ask for your blessing on Father John and Ella, for our church wardens Denise and Dave, for our PCC. Guide them, inspire them in all that they do. Lord, you have given us life and have shown us how to live in love. Unshackle us from human attitude and judgment that we may open our hearts and allow your love to flow through us and share your compassion and your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. Creator God, we give thanks for our lives and the beautiful world you have given us to enjoy, for the changing seasons as we move from summer towards autumn, for day and night, time to rest and time to work and to play, for all your people created in your image, that like seeds we may live and grow in harmony with each other through your love and your peace. Lord, your love has no boundaries. Grant us, as imperfect as we are, not to turn away from our families, our friends, our communities, when we are troubled or overwhelmed. May we follow your way, unselfish, caring, compassionate, loving to all who are in need. In you we have the perfect example of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in the darkness of our broken world, we pray for the light of Jesus to shine, bringing light, hope and love to all. Light up our hearts and our minds through our prayers and praise, through our song and your word. Give strength to all who seek to bring light and love into the dark places of our world. Give wisdom to our politicians and our world leaders. Lord, we pray at this time for reconciliation in all war-torn countries of your world, for humanity to know peace and let go of the need for power, hatred, the need to kill and maim. In Jesus' name we pray for peace, a peace only you can give to heal our broken world and restore harmony to your beautiful creation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving God, may we pray for all who are suffering at this time, for those on our church prayer list, for those who care for loved ones, for our health service, and for all who offer care for your people. 
for those who are struggling to provide food for their children, for those who will not heat their homes this winter, for the homeless. We pray for the food banks in our communities and for the volunteers who run them. Lord, may we, your servants, find love in our hearts to offer what we can do to help those who are in need, as you call us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Merciful God, we remember our loved ones who are no longer with us. We reflect on the time we have spent with them and the love they shared with us that lives on in our hearts. At this time, we remember the family and friends of Alison Corey. May your peace surround them and bring them calm at this difficult time. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and in their darkness we pray they may see his eternal light. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He's reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I wave you a sign of peace. I share the peace with a friendly wave. And for those of you at home, peace be with you also from the people of all saints. And now we stand and sing our offertory hymn as we prepare the table for the Eucharist. Now thank we all our God. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life, 
and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all a perfect sacrifice of sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which he shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and we lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven and we will sing together. So Please be seated. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. Please remain in your seats. In a moment, I will mask and bring to you where you are the body and blood of Christ, the wafer, intincted with the mark of the cross with the Eucharistic wine. For those of you at home, I commend to you the prayer of the act of spiritual communion.
God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And now we stand and sing our final hymn, Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown. And now may God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you who are here and with those who you love wherever they may be today and always. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, thank you for being here this morning. Those of you in All Saints, and thank you to those who are following us from their homes, wherever that may be, all over the world. It's wonderful that we are able to worship together. And it's equally wonderful for those of you who are here in All Saints to be able to say, if you wish, please stay. There's coffee available after church. Uh, for those of you at home who love the, uh, the Zoom coffees, that will be next Sunday. We're going to try to alternate uh, in church and virtual coffee. So today, if you have time, if you have the wish, please do say for coffee and fellowship. And thank you, Sarah, today for coming along and preparing it for us. We actually, we still do need volunteers. A number of people uh, signed up on the list. We're going to try and start the sidesman rotor from September so that uh, Denise is not always glued to the, uh, the seat as the leader of the synagogue. We're going to share it out so there'll be other people. Thank you to those of you who volunteered. And if there's anybody else who would like to, uh, that would be wonderful. The other area where we could do with help, if anybody has car, comes by car, and has free seats. There are one or two of our regular congregation who are no longer driving. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, uh, the people living close by, if you wouldn't mind and could make a brief detour, please let me know and we will make up a little car club. And you never know, you might end up on BBC One 
We're doing a regular series, the car club, car share going to, to all sides. Who knows? Uh, the other notice is that, well, two, actually. Uh, first is that before I arrived, uh, Sandy Alton made a wonderful book which, co which gave details about the different servicemen who are remembered as losing their lives and who are commemorated here in All Saints. During lockdown, the, uh, it's a hardback uh, book. It seems to have gone missing. People used to take it home, look at it, and bring it back. If anybody by any chance has it at home and had totally forgotten about it, if this jogs your memory, please do bring it back so that we can continue to, to, uh, to share it. And then the other thing is that, and really important, on Saturday the 3rd of September, as well as one of Mandy's sons getting married, and I'm sure you're going to have a great day, for those who aren't attending um, the Witchfield wedding party, we'll be having a quiz, parish quiz, in Blackwell Hall. There are still places available. Saturday 3rd of September, starting at 7 for 7.30. So if you haven't put your name down, please do so now. Linda, Philippa, myself, we're all here this morning. If you'd like to join us, it's great fun. It's £15 for a ticket. Uh, that includes a, an enormous fish and chip supper uh, halfway through and a really nice evening of fellowship. Saturday 3rd of September. If you'd like to come, please do join us. So now a new week begins. It's full of promise, it's full of possibilities. Whatever you're going to be doing, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.